Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here in the Zoom room. It's really helpful to see, see beings and dear ones and Sangha community coming together. And uh, if you're joining us afterwards in practice um, through the YouTube channel, I hope you also feel we we're also extending a sense of connectedness and welcome to you whenever you're showing up. Uh, my name's Jill. I'm one of the Dharma teachers with True North Insight, and uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm a steward of Six Nation territory, um, colonially known as Fergus, Ontario, is where I'm residing right now, and I'm really happy to share some reflections and especially some practice with you. The talk tonight is inspired by a poem that uh, I'm linking down below. Uh, please check out that link um, and it's here in the Zoom room chat from one of my favorite poets and wisdom teachers, uh, Rosemary Watola Tromer. And uh, I've also put a link for her Buy Me a Coffee mm, page. It's an app that you can support people with, you know, five bucks or whatever you can manage. And it, it helps them out a lot. Um, or buy books of poetry. Yes. Okay. This uh this one really uh, stood out for me, just came, I think, yesterday? No, June 11th. That's weird. Huh, I, I read it yesterday, let's put it that way, and it, it was like one of those things that was very timely and helpful for me. It's called Toward Peace. I, I'm just remembering that I wanted to, before I read the poem, <laughs> that's not nice, just about to read it, no, um, take a moment, if you wish, to let your mind consider the word, well, in Sanskrit, it's nirvana, um, in, yeah. In music, it's a great band, but in Sanskrit, Nirvana, which in the Pali language, which the teachings of the Buddha were first written down, it's called Nibbana, Nibbana, N-I-B-B-A-N-A. -A. So if you think, just let that word, that image, that thought, whatever it is for you, Nirvana, what does anything come into view, into mind, into sensation? Is there a sense of place? Um, is there a sense of distance, like it's somewhere other than here? <laughs> um, perhaps there's images or sounds or other beings. Nirvana. And then with that in awareness, just starting to, to form, or maybe there's things that immediately come into awareness with that word, those words. Now I'll read the poem, Toward Peace, from Rosemary Wattola Tromer. She says, perhaps some part of me still believes peace is a destination, a place we arrive, ideally together. I notice how shiny it is, this belief, like a flower made of crystal, beautiful but lifeless, devoid of the dust and scuff that come from living a real day. Meanwhile, there is this invitation to grow into peace the way real flowers grow, 
in the dirt. With blight and drought, beetles and hail. Meanwhile, this invitation to live in the tangle of fear and failure, to be humbled by my own inner wars and wonder how to find a living peace right here. The peace that arrives when we take just one step through the mess toward compassion. And notice as our foot rises, our heart also rises. And in that lifted moment, still scraping along in the dirt, there is a peace so real we become light. Become the momentum that is the change. Hmm. I'm going to read it again because there's a lot and um, it's another way to uh, sometimes when we first hear a poem it's you know a focus on the words and this time you you might see what it's like to just rest back a little bit uh, not so much in the mind and see what lands toward peace perhaps some part of me still believes peace is a destination a place we arrive, ideally together. I notice how shiny it is, this belief, like a flower made of crystal, beautiful but lifeless, devoid of the dust and scuff that come from living a real day. Meanwhile, there is this invitation to grow into peace the way real flowers grow, in the dirt. With blight and drought, beetles and hail. Meanwhile, this invitation to live in the tangle of fear and failure. To be humbled by my own inner wars. And wonder how to find a living peace right here. The peace that arrives when we take just one step through the mess toward compassion. And notice, as our foot rises, our heart also rises. And in that lifted moment, still scraping along in the dirt, there is a peace so real, we become light, become the momentum that is the change. Hmm. Thank you, Rosemary. So good, so, so good. So this, uh, you know, she's calling it peace here. Um, I started with the invitation to consider Nirvana. I, I'm using Nirvana just because it's more commonly known, but Nibbana is, um, Uh, the Pali word, we'll just leave it there. So um, Nibbana, which we are, we can sometimes have that feeling like it's a place, it's a destination, it's certainly not this hot mess. It's not this crap of a day. This it's it's like something we strive for perhaps or practice towards or have some vision of or like some people get there but you know we might not feel it's possible for us and so I wanted to um explore that a little bit more uh nibbana means putting out the fire by means of extinction other than blowing <laughs> so uh because blowing on a fire to put it out it depends on the fire can often just fuel it more or, or give it more oxygen and spark it up and so 
the way it's defined of putting out the fire is by not feeding it, not adding more fuel, um, or taking away the the fuel or the means of its production. Whatever is producing the fire, we take that away. By not feeding it, by not adding further fuel, is how Nibbana comes about. And so when we apply this to the mind, it is referring to extinguishing the flames of greed, hatred, and delusion. These are the three roots of suffering. And, hmm, do I want to go there? <laughs> no. So, um, nerd moment, putting on my glasses to get out the Pali English Dictionary, one of my favorite books. And um, to say a bit more about Nibbana. Um, okay. The, this is so beautiful. The third part of the definition, pardon me for looking down, but the dying out in the heart of the threefold fire, greed, hatred, and delusion, raga, dosha, and moha. Um, that's beautiful that it's putting out the, the fire in our hearts. Wonderful. And it and then another part of the definition says that it's purely and solely an ethical state. That's most excellent and helpful. <laughs> and it is to be reached in this birth by ethical practices, contemplation, and insight. It is therefore not transcendental. That's helpful. We're not trying to get somewhere else. It's right here in the muck. Uh, practical habits realized in one's heart. Um, it's also difficult because, because language <laughs> and what we do with words and concepts, we, we, they become a form, they become a thing just because we're using words, but it's also described as being an untranslatable expression of the unspeakable, of that for which in the Buddha's own saying, there is no word which cannot be grasped in terms of reasoning and cool logic, sometimes called the nameless. And so it's it's just we have to use language to communicate. We don't have to. It's one of the ways we communicate through language. Um, and we just want to watch how much we attach to it or, or uh, cling to and just watch how naming something makes it a thing, a place, something other that um, we can be clinging to and to just mm, use the language lightly to point towards the experience of freeing the heart and it goes on yet it is a reality its characteristics and features can be described um etc peace rest Perfect, perfect happiness, supreme happiness. Uh, as you may know, the Buddha often taught in, in similes and lots of imagery and evocative, helpful languages and images. And so here's a few of them that... Uh, are other descriptions of Nibbana. The harbor of refuge, the cool cave, the island amidst the floods, 
the place of bliss, emancipation, liberty, safety, the supreme, the tranquil, the medicine for all evil. And it goes on and on. There's this big list of them. But some of them are very... Mm, the unshaken, the ambrosia. <laughs> it's like there's all these ways of trying to like dance around language of something that's not can't be captured and uh as soon as we try to put something in a box it's no longer nirvana um yeah okay enough of that um so nirvana is not a place uh, Venerable Narada Thera said, Nibbana is not situated at any place, nor is it a sort of heaven where a transcendental ego resides. It is a state which is dependent upon this body itself. It is a Dhamma which is within the reach of all. Gil Fransdale, Nibbana is not a place. In attaining Nibbana, we don't escape from one location to another. Another teacher, Aya Tata, Tata Loka, um, said one challenge is that people sometimes imagine Nibbana as being like a faraway city outside themselves. So they set up a strong duality and then want to practice really, really hard to try to get there. I feel that so much of right effort is to come back to ourselves and to awaken within the present in our bodies, feelings, and minds. As long as the aspiration is projected outside, the grasping mind is like a long bungee cord. <laughs> forever propelling us into other circumstances, keeping us dissatisfied and suffering. So much of practice is getting out of that habit of perpetually seeking and grasping outside ourselves. I found this poem so helpful the other day because it was a long overdue, difficult, conversation and process with a dear one that was um, had been lingering and not able to be processed and kept being put off and etc and uh because it was mucky mucky and it was uh such a relief oh my goodness such a nibbana to just get in the muck let's let's get in it let's <laughs> talk about it there's such an aversion and fear to uh sometimes to difficulties and it's only going through meeting with moving towards compassion for self and other all beings that we have the possibility to free our hearts. Um, Gil Fransdale again, as long as someone believes happiness can only be found through the right conditions, it makes sense to cling to those conditions. Even when knowing full well that condition phenomenon are subject to change. So clinging, interestingly, for Dharma nerds, uh, the same word for clinging also means fuel, upadana. Upadana is, you know, what the clinging, nibbana is extinguishing, taking away the fuel. Removing the clinging. 
we know that in the four noble truths or ennobling truths that there is dukkha or stress, suffering. That's another whole talk, but we'll just leave it there. We'll just say stress for short. Is um, has a cause, and that cause is tanha, craving. And craving gives rise to clinging, which is upadana, fuel. So the, the, this is what fuels and continues samsara. Um, so it's very interesting to me that upadana is the same word, clinging and fuel. And so if we believe that peace, freedom, nibbana, mm, the sweet release of the heart, all these um, things that we talked about in the description are, are can only be found through particular right conditions, um, then we're naturally going to try to cling to and control those conditions to get and to not get, not have some things, but to have only what we think is okay um and this is fueling more dukkha more stress more suffering um i'm just there's a whole sutta called the fire sutta the fire sermon And I'm just seeing, I think that's a little much. <laughs> okay. What other threads here? Um, there's a phrase that's often chanted and said, Nibbana Pachoya Chayu Hotu. May it become a cause for Nibbana. So this is just using the English. May it become a cause for Nibbana. That's a really great homework for this week. Write it down. Post it around. And whatever is going on, crappy or great, May it become a cause for Nibbana. How, what does that mean? How? What does that look like? How could this mess be a cause for Nibbana? It can't be. Oh, but it so can. May it become. May it become a cause for Nibbana for freeing the heart. May it become a cause for ethical behavior. Wise speech, wise action, non-harm, non-greed, non-heedlessness. Hmm. Yes. I'll be putting that on post-it notes around for myself this week. May it be a cause for Nibbana. Wow. As soon as we float that into something that we think this isn't a bond and this is a mess, maybe how could this become a cause for nibbana? It's already there's already less clinging, there's already less pushing, there's already curiosity and a little bit of space just by floating that in, and then. When there's a little pause, a little space, there's choice. We can choose how to respond sometimes, sometimes in that little space. Maybe by being quiet a bit longer. <laughs> maybe by speaking up. Uh, maybe by some act of generosity, etc. Okay. Uh, 
I feel like I left one out. So let me just pause for a sec. Yeah. Nope, we're good. <laughs> I think. Okay. So, thankfully, we are showing up here and more important than any of all of that is the practice where we cultivate our capacity to be with ourselves right here, right now, in a, this flower that's in the dirt with the bugs, with the, with the hail, with the, what else did she say in her poem? <laughs> with our inner wars, with our fears and failures. Ah, so good. So yes, let's practice, let's practice. So um, adjusting your space so that you feel comfortable and awake. And where are you? We have this this laboratory of our practice where we get to mm, grow the conditions that will support us in our daily life. Meditation, just sitting on our cushion or chair, couch, is, um, is not the fruit. It is... Um, how it conditions our capacity for more presence and wisdom in our daily lives. Mm. Oh, taking your time to settle in, adjust your posture. If you need any other movement or touch or adjustments or supports, and then as we begin, let's just float in that word. Nibbana and let it land right here, right in the center of this heart, body, mind, in the center of this moment, Nibbana. And let that invitation, Nibbana, inform curiosity with any tension that's here in the body. So you could just let it scan slowly down the body and feel any tension in the muscles of the face or the temples or the top of the head, the back of the skull. Feeling into the muscles in the neck and shoulders, inviting any tender care or softness or space to tension that may be here.
and continue to let attention flow down through the body and notice the heart center, belly center, and if there's anything here that needs kind attention. And then really feel our rootedness like a, a flower that's the real way flowers grow in the dirt. And feel our rootedness, feel our connection with the earth, feel your weight, your gravity, your contact with the earth through whatever substance you're body is resting on. See if there's any tension in the form of contractions or thoughts or aversions, etc., or habits that are holding you away from this relationship with ground, this intimate present moment, Nibbana. And as the Pali English Dictionary said, Nibbana is purely and solely an ethical state. So taking some time now to recall and feel into your ethics, your values that guide your life. We undertake the trainings to refrain from causing harm, from speaking falsely, from taking what isn't freely given. We undertake the trainings to refrain from causing harm through our sensuality and sexuality. and to refrain from heedlessness or unmindfulness from intoxication. <clears throat> so you may have your own words, your own values or ethics, precepts that guide your behavior, your heart, the way you move through the world, take some time to reflect on those and feel them in your body, feel them in the heart mind. These are protections for you and for others. These are how people know you're a safer being to be with.
can you feel in the body, heart, mind, how these ethics give you strength, give you uprightness. Become the impetus, the momentum for how we act in the world. And then gently an invitation here to turn some attention towards what may be entangling for you lately. What fires are burning in the heart mind? What desires or aversions? What inner tangles, inner wars, And understand that we can find this living peace right here when we take just one step towards through with compassion. So if there's any aversions that are showing in awareness, in the body, heart, mind, with mindfulness and with wisdom, just seeing clearly, we could perhaps see or feel how aversion is causing us pain, fire. It might even be hatred. might be causing sleepless nights or lots of ruminating. And we could ask, what is fueling this fire? Do we spend a lot of time justifying our position, etc.? And then what might cool these flames? perhaps attending to some of the good qualities of a person or a thing that we have an aversion to, or 
practicing a Brahma Vihara, a metta practice for self compassion, forgiveness. What, what what might what's fueling the fire and how could we remove that fuel or cool it? We don't want to spend a lot of time thinking, just floating in these questions to just let yourself feel in the body, even just this attention, this compassionate attention is already lessening the fuel. And then we might also at times or now be experiencing the fuels, the fire, the clinging of desire. Could be an object, could be a person, could be something about ourselves that we want, that we're clinging to. And then we could ask, what's what feeds this fire? And in what ways might we unbind from that fuel source? Or what cools it? What cools these flames of desire? The Buddha taught that when the fuel is removed, the suffering is extinguished. And this is a taste of Nibbana. Nibbana. Here and now.
One of the ways that we cultivate this compassionate heart and presence is through our practice of Brahma Viharas, the cultivation of the divine abode, the compassionate heart that turns towards the difficulty, not pushing away, not reaching to some far away place from this present moment. So you might use your own words or repeat these as you reflect. May I see clearly with wisdom and compassion. May I see clearly what fuels the fires within this heart, mind, body. May I know this peace that is right here, right now. A peace so real that we become light, become the momentum that is the change. Toward peace, perhaps some part of me still believes peace is a destination, a place we arrive ideally together. I notice how shiny it is, this belief, like a flower made of crystal, beautiful but lifeless devoid of the dust and scuff that come from living a real day. Meanwhile, there is this invitation to grow into peace the way real flowers grow in the dirt with blight and drought, beetles and hail Meanwhile, this invitation to live in the tangle of fear and failure, to be humbled by my own inner wars, and wonder how to find a living peace right here. The peace that arrives when we take just one step through the mess toward compassion. And notice as our foot rises, our heart also rises. And in that lifted moment, still scraping along in the dirt, there is a peace so real we become light, become the momentum that is the change.
Nibbana Pachayo Hotu. May it be a condition for realizing Nibbana. Thank you for your practice and please check out the links below to um, Rosemary's poem and to buy her coffee and um, we hope to practice with you again.